that's what we're going to learn today. It's a little song I wrote called Gone, and it's about my childhood innocence after I saw my first Steel Panther concert. But anyway, it is kind of a good example, and this could be kind of considered a lesson in choosing appropriate chord voicings for a hide gain thing to kind of keep things from getting like too muddy, I suppose, maybe. But uh, anyways, uh, the intro of it is pretty heavily palm muted, so I've got the right side of my palm over the bridge of the guitar, right? And the voicings are super simple. It's an E minor. The song is in E minor, right? So, actually it's not even an E minor. It's just an E power chord. So it's an open E and a 2A. All right, so we got, and I'm kind of getting the E first on a downstroke. So, E, B, E, into a G chord voicing, right? You'll see it's a G major chord voicing because I have the root and it's major third, right? And now we're gonna use the same voicing for the next three chords. So I have E, the G. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that same chord voicing on the G, starting on a C, 3A, sliding into five. So I've got a D major type thing to C, up a string, three, two, E. So I've got four chords, E, minor G, D major C, and then I walk it back through the scale from G to E, G, F sharp. So that's really good to know your major and minor scales, right? Because you can kind of get those little notes in between. So if it's pretty heavily palm muted, it sounds like this. Now the next thing, right? The second time around, we get to this little part. And again, I'm starting off with this kind of D major power chord-ish chord voicing, 5A and 4D. And then I'm gonna turn it into a power chord. So I've got 5A and 7D. And then I'm gonna turn it into this, D in its fourth, one, two, three, four. So D in its fifth, D in its fourth, D in its major third. I'm just kind of combining double stopping through the scale. And again, this would be the D mix Lydian scale if I played the whole octave. But it's really just the one, uh, three, four, and five. Back to C. So all together, the whole intro. Kind of have to do that with your head. All right, uh, so. That happens again the second time. The only thing that changes there is on the back end of that, we've got a G. And that's kind of like a chord and a mute. Down, up, mute, down, up. And then I go to this A, right? And you would think in the key of E minor or G major, same difference. This would be an A minor, but no. Curveball, we've got it with a major third. I'm kind of walking back through maybe what you would consider the A major scale, right? So I'm getting the double stop or the power chord, however you want to look at it, at the same time. Then I'm getting the A string. And kind of the C sharp, right? The C sharp is, I guess, like a borrowed tone or something from a different key. However you want to look at it. That's why it kind of goes back to that E, right? And it's kind of gives a little, a wicked type thing. So the whole thing. And that's the whole verse, right? Now, uh, it kind of just cycles over a couple times until we get to, I guess, what I would consider the chorus, which sounds like this. All right, so same voicings. We're starting with that C. Now, also too, let's, let's talk about the numbers, right? So if we're in the key of E minor or G, and again, the way I think of chord progressions, I always relate them to 
the, the major scale, right? So if we're in G major, E is a six, we have a six, two, a one, two, a five, two, a four, six, one, five, four. And it's really good to do that because then you can transpose stuff really easily. Like a six, one, five, four in the key of C would be A minor, C major, uh, G major, F major. All right, it's good to be able to do that kind of thing. But anyways, so the chorus, we're gonna have C to D to E, right? So C major, D major, a different voiced E minor. Voicing just another name for playing the same chord in a different way, right? So this is a four, five, six voicing for, voicing for the chorus. Now, we already did the, th the same thing with the C and the D. I'm going down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, down, up. And again, this, a very underutilized E minor voicing, which is just E, 7A, and it's minor third, 5D. Right, regular E minor, more compact E minor. Right? And now, another reason I chose this one is because of where the vocals were, right? So this isn't a full, any two note chord isn't a full major or minor chord, but what this is, is a root and it's minor third, so we're leaving the fifth out. And the fifth in E, E, F, G, A, B, is a B. And vocally, what I'm doing, or attempting to do here, is to really hit like a high B on top of this. Uh, so the, the melody, so, so basically my voice and the chord and the power chord are combining to make a triad, right? And that's something that you might wanna think about if, in your own compositions as far as like, where you wanna put your vocals and stuff like this. So this would be like on top of the chord because the note I'm singing is higher than the chord. So something they teach you in music school is to put the, the vocal melody on top of the chord. And I guess this could be considered an example of that. And the melody is like super high for me to sing. It goes like this. Yeah, like that. I mean, I guess I could try to sing it without blowing the microphone out. I've got no way to run. It's brutal. It's absolutely brutal to hit that, especially without a warm up, but whatever. Anyways, uh, yeah, so uh, the whole chords are just that the, the first time is the one. Oh, that one right there. What is that? What is going on? We've got the E minor. Another beautiful thing about this E minor is below it, we have the open E string, if you're in regular tuning, right? Which this is. So uh, I'm getting the, the chord, power chord, E, E. And then this right here, this is kind of like the, the money shot of the song, I suppose. All it is is that my middle finger is grabbing the sixth fret on the E string. Now, why does that sound so wicked? Because again, E minor is kind of like the tonal center of this song. And if you go from an E to a B flat, what is that? That's a tritone, a diminished thing. So it'd be like open E. There's really nothing more metal than a tritone. So the first time it's... The second time... I'm kind of just sitting on that E minor because I'm trying to hit that big soaring vocal line. Third time. Back to the tritone. And right there, okay, so I'm looking for a way to kind of bridge these two parts together. So I started the same way, C to a D. Do I end on an E minor? No, I don't. I'm doing this G power chord, so I've got 5D and 7G. So this is a G and a D. Now, the interesting thing about this is because we're so used to going to E minor there, it kind of like leads you to believe another E minor is coming, but I switch it and I kind of am getting like an E minor seven. Right, so this would be like an E minor seven voicing, but if you leave the root note, you just get a, and you just kind of leave this part of the song exposed because you're expecting E minor and the ear's waiting for E minor, but then you hit it with the top of what would be an E minor seven, and then it kind of just leaves a little bit of like a lack of resolution, I guess, is kind of what I would call it. And then it goes, you know, it goes back to the E minor to 
to reward the listener for sticking with it again. And then it's like a super long guitar solo. So I think this, this lesson would be probably like an hour and a half if I tried to teach the whole guitar solo because it's like a really lengthy one, especially for me. I'm not like a huge fan of super long guitar solos, but you'll understand more when you see the actual animated video that comes with this because, spoiler alert, it's like a chase scene. So a guitar solo, especially like a minute long guitar solo was, was appropriate for this part. But basically those are the two main parts of the song guitar wise, and we'll play them again one more time, right? So the verse. G, D, C, backward G. Happens twice, and then C, D, E. Second time. Basically, that is it. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please let me know.